In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio, and I'm gonna tell you why you should or shouldn't buy it. Hey everyone, it's Wes Newman with The Pocket Perspective. If you're new here, this channel is dedicated to reviews and how-tos on EDC gear, mostly knives and flashlights, but sometimes I'll throw in other stuff as well. Uh, anything that can go on your person or in your pocket. So let's go ahead and jump into the review of the Ace Biblio. Uh, first, I'm gonna cover the specs, uh, then the design and build quality. I'll weave in my thoughts and impressions as we go along. And then I'll finish up with a summary and tell you why you should or shouldn't buy the knife. So let's start with the specs. So this knife is what I would call a medium knife. Uh, it follows uh, design dimensions, very common to many other knives. It's basically the three, four, seven rule that I've seen. Uh, it's got uh, just under a three inch blade, so two and seven eighths. Uh, the handle is uh, right on four inches. And so that makes the overall length uh, six and seven eighths inches. And it's using uh, three millimeter uh, blade stock. Uh, the weight is reported to be 3.7 ounces or right under 105 grams. Let's take a look on my scale here. It's 108.6, a little over. So 3.83 ounces. So it's a little over uh, the specs. It's got a full flat grind. Uh, the blade shape is uh, basically a spear point uh, or a drop point is, is what I would consider it. It's got M390 steel, uh, green canvas micarta scales. Uh, it does have other color micarta scales. I believe you can get uh, tie handles as well. Uh, it's got a liner lock and uh, it's got a wire clip uh, left, right uh, tip up. Uh, this is uh, made in uh, Maniago, Italy. Uh, price on these is $175. You can buy them uh, direct from Giant Mouse and also uh, other uh, regular knife retailers. Uh, behind the edge thickness on this guy is, let's see, looks like about 24 thousandths. So 24 thousandths uh, with that full flat grind is, is gonna make it a nice slicer. All right, so those are the specs on it. Uh, let's compare it to a few other knives. So what I would think is very similar knife uh, is the native, in my opinion. So if we hold these up next to each other, you can see they're very similar in uh, blade length and overall length. If we hold them over one another, you can see even the blade shape is very, very similar. Both have this uh, front finger choil. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the native. So let's uh, bring in the pair of two and it basically dwarfs this knife. You can see it's the pair of two is uh, much larger. So again, this is what I would consider as medium. And then uh, we'll bring in one more. And we have the CRKT uh, Peat, I believe is how it's uh, pronounced. And I hope I'm pronouncing this name right, the Biblio. Yeah, so it's uh, the peat is uh, is a little smaller than the Biblio. Uh, definitely has uh, a wider uh, stock on the Biblio. Um, overall length is, isn't that much shorter though on the peat, as you can see here. Um, obviously, uh, same designers. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll go into the Giant Mouse uh, line in a few minutes, but uh, this knife is a collaboration with uh, Jesper Vaknes with CRKT. So that's the comparison. So let's jump into the design now. As I just said, this is a Giant Mouse knife, which is a company formed by uh, Jens Anzo, Jesper Voxnes, and uh, Jim Worth. Uh, Jens and uh, Jesper uh, are the designers of these knives, and uh, Jim is the CEO. They have several different lines. Uh, the Giant Mouse line uh, is, lim is limited runs. Essentially, they just do a limited run of each model, and then they're one and done. And the Ace, uh, it, which this one is, uh, is basically their production line. So they also have a fixed blade line as well. Uh, the GMF-1 is a very popular model. You see that one a lot. It doesn't have any handles, just skeletonized with three holes in it. Uh, yeah, so as I said, the, the Biblio has a couple different variations uh, of handles. This is the, the green canvas micarta. 
And it does come a little bit uh, lighter, um, you know, micarta ages, and, or you can oil it up, but you can see uh, it's it, down here under the clip uh, is, is kind of the color that it comes. But, uh, you know, I've been handling this and using it for a few weeks now and it's starting to darken up. Uh, yeah, so this definitely uh, feels like a Vox, uh, a Vox design. I know that they're supposed to be uh, designed by both uh, Anzo and Vox, but this one, this one clearly feels like a Vox uh, design to me. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of both uh, Jens Anzo and Jesper Voxnays. Uh, I think they do great designs and I have several of their knives. Yeah, so again, you know, this is what I would call that that's medium sized knife. Um, not quite small, not quite medium. You know, it's got uh, less than three inch blade, uh, which uh, is good for a lot of areas. A lot of, a lot of areas have a, a three inch blade limit. Uh, you know, it's got a, a lot of interesting things on it. It's got uh, multiple opening methods. It's got a flipper and then it's got this, um, I'm not sure what you call that shape, but you see Jesper use that a lot. So um, yeah, you can, you can flip it. Uh, you can spotty flick it and you can uh, flump, thumb, flump, thumb flick it as well. Uh, so it's got multiple opening methods if you're into that kind of stuff. It has this, uh, this nice uh, uh, front uh, finger choil as well so it's got multiple grip positions and uh, you can see that it's got contoured micarta handles so it's it's got a lot of really uh, nice design elements uh, the wire clip on it isn't quite as uh, as deep as what i would like to see it looks like they could move it up a little bit further but it may start getting a little close to this lanyard hole and this whole area may feel a bit crowded yeah um you know, it's got uh, also this this jimping, this uh, this forward jimping, uh, which uh, Jesper does on on several of his knives. And uh, you know, it it you can use it for your thumb, and I think my thumb lands in a good spot. But it's it, I think it's primarily designed for your index finger uh, for a pinch grip and for you to do more fine tasks. Um, so I like the the jimping on this knife. I wish there was a little bit more but it may be a little bit close to this hole. I mean, I, I'm just a fan of jimping in general. And then it has uh, some jimping, just a little bit of, I guess it's got three jimps there uh, on the back of the flipper. The uh, flipper's positioned uh, just right. So uh, basically almost uh, perpendicular here with the pivot. So it's, it's easy to deploy, no problems there. It runs on uh, bearings. And then <clears throat> again, it's got a liner lock and these are stainless steel liners in here. It's got quite a few uh, screws holding this thing together here. You can see uh, two standoff screws here. It's got this additional clip screw and you do have to take the, the clip screws out to disassemble and then of course your pivot. And it also has this other uh, hidden screw underneath the scale. So once you take the scales off, there is an additional screw under here. And I have disassembled this knife, uh, getting this, uh, the, the liner on and uh, off is a little bit fidgety. Um, there's a hole for the stop pin as well. And uh, you know, a hole for the lanyard tube and getting it all lined and pushed down at the same time uh, can, can be a little bit uh, frustrating, but yeah, it's nothing, nothing you can't overcome. This knife feels like it wants to be a bigger knife in my opinion. It feels like almost a compact version of something different. And the reason I say that is, is just the way that, uh, you know, the handle is designed. Uh, if, if I hold it in the traditional way, it's just not very comfortable for me. And, and what I mean by that is here, if, if I show you um, this part of the handle right here actually digs into my pinky and then it basically squishes my, my index finger right up into the flipper. Maybe that's good for locking in, I don't know, but it's just not that comfortable for me to hold. And then if I hold it uh, in the forward position, uh, again, uh, if it feels like um, that my finger wants to slide up into the blade, which, which I don't like. Um, and that's when I'm really just gripping it a lot. You know, if I'm just gonna take it out and use it for a couple cutting tasks, it doesn't really feel out of place to me, but it really feels like it wants to be a bigger knife. You know, like, uh, you know, an inch longer, uh, probably overall. And I think it would, it would fit my hand a lot better. And I have, you know, those medium sized hands. And so I think with people with larger hands, it's definitely not gonna fit you, you know, just my opinion. But, uh, you know, to me, I think it's it's a bit of a miss there on, on the actual ergonomics. 
So other than, you know, it just not being super comfortable in my hand, uh, you know, th there's really no other hot spots, just these these two areas here when I when I grip it uh, really tight. Uh, other than that, um, yeah, n nothing's really digging into my hand. Uh, the clip the clip seems to sink into my palm just fine. It's nicely rounded. That's one thing I like about uh, wire clips is they just kind of melt into your palm. So as I stated in the specs, uh, the steel on this blade is Bowler M390, same as CTS-204P or CPM-20CV. And in my opinion, it is one of the best stainless steels around for folders. It was one of the first uh, super steels to hit the knife industry. I'll leave a link down in the description below to Knife Steel Nerds if you wanna learn more about it. And uh, looking at the blade, you'll notice that uh, it doesn't have the steel marked on it. That's one of the things that you typically see on a knife. Really the only markings on this knife at all are just ace. Uh, but if you, if you disassemble this uh, on the actual show side uh, scale, and I, I don't think you'll be able to see it in there, I'll take a picture and, and throw it up here. It actually says, uh, uh, I think Anzo Vox has the giant mouse logo, it says Italy and M390 on the inside of the scale there. So it is marked uh, if, you, if you forget. So moving on to the build quality, uh, this is a very nicely executed knife. A couple things I do like about it are the rounded spine and the uh, rounded uh, front, front finger choil, as you can see there. Uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention, it does have some jimping there on the liner, which makes it easy to uh, disengage. Uh, it, you can see the lockup on this uh, is not awesome. I wish it was locked up a little bit more and it does have just the uh, littlest amount of blade stick. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. Just a little bit of blade stick. It did have more and it finally worked its way out. Uh, the centering on this knife, is, is spot on. Of course, I did disassemble it and, and recentered it, but when it came out uh, of the box, it, it was right on. You know, it does it does drop shut, you know, if, if that's something that you're into. So overall, you know, it's a pretty nicely executed knife. In summary, I really wanna like this knife. The looks are good. The execution is top notch. I like the design. Uh, the specs are, are really nice. Uh, but I just can't get comfortable with it. Uh, you know, I can't get comfortable in the front grip. I can't get comfortable in the rear grip. Uh, so yeah, this is something that I'm probably gonna move on in the secondary. If they come out with a larger size, I'll be definitely picking that one up. So moving on to why you should or shouldn't buy the knife. You should buy the knife if you're looking for a sub three inch blade that can handle almost any folder task. You should buy the knife if you're looking for something with canvas micarta handles. And you should buy the knife if you're looking for something designed by Jens Anzo and Jesper Voxnays. And why you shouldn't buy the knife. You shouldn't buy the knife if you have larger hands. Uh, but maybe if you do have large hands, your pinky will end up landing back here and it'll be more comfortable. You shouldn't buy the knife if you don't like wire clips. And you shouldn't buy the knife if you're on a budget. I think this is getting pretty expensive for M390 and Mercado. Let me know down in the comments what you think about Giant Mouse knives. Do you like how they do limited runs and then they have this Ace production line? And as always, if you enjoyed this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks and have a great day.